calculating your hard to borrow rate fee. If you're shorting stocks, you absolutely must know what a hard to borrow rate is and how to calculate how much money this is going to cost you in your trading. What's going on guys? Welcome on into today's video on the TC trading channel. So the hard to borrow rate, this HTB, you'll see this kind of that short for the hard to borrow rate, you know, tossed around on your broker or on social media, wherever. This is a very, very important topic. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but when it comes to shorting stocks, this hard to borrow rate is exactly why it's not as easy as you may think. Because a lot of times you get stocks that go on these short squeezes and you know go crazy high and these penny stocks that'll go up one, two, 300% on a given day or a given week. And you're like, well, there's no way that the, the stock is actually fundamentally gonna hold that value. And many times they don't. But the problem is taking advantage of that backside actually can be a lot more costly than you think. And it's not just because the stock could go higher and squeeze you out, get your margin called. It's actually because if you're holding shares short, if you're borrowing shares too short that you're looking to ultimately buy back at a cheaper price, there's a fee for that. Think of it as the cost for doing business. Now, it kind of sucks. I totally agree. But you have to make sure you're aware. And this is exactly why a lot of new traders should totally stay away from trying to short sell, you know, these momentum penny stocks. And many brokers or at least basic or, or you know, beginner brokers won't even allow you to trade these things short. Uh, but as you progress and as you find brokers that will allow you or will allow you to borrow shares, it's, it's useful information. So we're going to be using Weeble as an example. Now, the problems that you have on Weeble is that especially on some of these crazy momentum runners, these low float, you know, penny stocks that'll run, you know, on a day to day. For example, look at some of the top gainers on the right hand side of my screen here. You know, some of those are going to be or many of those will actually on a given day be very difficult to find shares. Um, Weeble will actually run out of shares that they can offer you to borrow uh, and go short with. So you have to use a different broker. Some of those include interactive brokers. There'll be a link to interactive brokers down below, Trade Zero, and there's many more that came from, but you'll have to go for a different broker if you really want to dive deeper into shorting. But let's understand what the hell the hard to borrow rate actually means. So in the top right of Weeble, now every platform will be slightly different, but again, top right is where you're going to find it on Weeble. On the mobile app, it'll be a little different, but they'll have a section underneath the stock as you pull it up. Top right on the desktop platform under the quotes uh, widget, There'll be this little dollar sign in, I guess, yellow or orange. You'll see it says marginable, day trade leverage long, overnight leverage long, maintenance requirement, and then the approximate annualized margin rate at 6.99%. That is essentially your hard to borrow rate. Some stocks will have an HTB, stands for hard to borrow, and will give you the, your rate, but the approximate annualized margin rate is essentially for this stock, which is Bed Bath & Beyond, what you need to know. Now, I'm going to now do a calculation on how to calculate what it's going to cost you each day to short Bed Bath & Beyond. And then of course, you can apply this calculation to any stock, any stock you're looking to short or stock that has, that has a hard to borrow rate in the future. Okay, this is what I wanna mention briefly before we dive into it. The lower that number, the better, right? The lower that number, the cheaper it is to borrow. Now, as a general rule of thumb for me, if we see an approximate margin rate below 50%, yeah, there's probably not going to be much of a problem if you're looking to short that stock for a couple of days max. And I'll explain why. So let's get into it. All right. So we are on the trusty iPad here. And here are the metrics or at least the data points that you need to know. The previous close, you need to know that hard to borrow rate in this case, the previous close here was 863. The hard to borrow rate was 699. I'm going to round that up to 7% to make it easier. The industry convention is 1.02. Not a huge deal, but what this really means is it's a percentage that's set essentially by different lending market participants, and this number can change. So as of right now, it's 1.02. It's not going to fluctuate or it shouldn't fluctuate too, too much, but that's the industry convention that is part of this calculation. Then last but not least, the number of shares. So let's just say that we want to do 100 shares. I want to short 100 shares. I want to borrow 100 shares of Bed Bath & Beyond. So in this case, I am going to write in 100. Now we can do our calculation. And again, this calculation is going to calculate how much it's going to cost you each day to hold Bed Bath & Beyond short, okay? 
100 shares in this example. And you could of course scale this up depending upon how many shares you want to short of this stock or a different stock in the future. And it can really apply to anything. So first off, we're going to take the previous close, which I'm going to, to kind of draw in or write in some variables. I know for those of us, remember our high school, college math classes, you know, this is going to be, you know, a flashback and it's going to scare you, but please, it's not, it's not meant to do that. So I'm going to sub these things in. So a PC will stand for previous close. HTB will be the hard to borrow rate and the industry convention will be C. So, okay, we'll, we'll make this calculation and then we'll go through it. So step one, we take the previous close times that industry convention. So 8.63 times the 1.02. We're going to get 8.8026. I'm going to round that to 8.80. Now, we take this number and we round it up to the nearest whole number no matter what. No matter if this came in at 8.01, it would get rounded up to 9. So now we take this and then we round up, okay? And now we're going to be left with roughly $9. That is our number that we're going to use in the next step of the calculation. That $9 is called your per share collateral amount. I'm going to call that in terms of variables, CA for collateral amount. Step two, we take that per share collateral amount. So CA, we multiply that by the number of shares. In this case, I'm borrowing 100 shares. So nine times 100 equals 900. This will be the value of our trade. I'm going to use this or call this variable V going forward into step number three. We take that trade value or that value V, we multiply it by the hard to borrow rate. That's where HTB comes in and that's 900 times 0 0.07. Okay, so again, for those who, you know, have, it's been a while since back in your math classes, if you take a step back, that hard to borrow rate of 7% equates to, in terms of this calculation, 0 0.07, okay? If it was 10%, it's 0 0.1, okay? 20%, 0 0.2, and so forth, okay? And if the hard to borrow rate is over 100%, it would be one point whatever. If it's 100% flat, it would just be one, okay? That's the multiplication. That's what you need to know when it comes to that hard to borrow rate. Now we get a number of 63. Now, what the heck is this? Is this the amount that we're gonna have to pay? This would be technically a dollar amount, but remember, at the top of our screen, that hard to borrow rate or back on Weeble, what did it say? It was called the approximate annualized margin rate. So that's an annualized number. So now we have to do one more calculation to get what it's gonna cost us each day to hold Bed Bath & Beyond short. I'm gonna call that AC. So we're gonna go AC, which is going to be the annual hard to borrow cost. We're going to then divide that by 360 days. That is the division. That's what we need to do. 360 is not 365, but they're going to use 360 as a proxy for one year. This comes out to be 63 divided by 360 equals 0.175. So it costs you about 17 and a half cents. That is what this is. This number means right here. 17 and a half cents per day to borrow 100 shares of Bed Bath & Beyond short with Weeble based on the current numbers and the fees and the calculations that we have in front of us, okay? If the hard to borrow rate changes, up, down, left, right, this number will change, right? That's all you need to know. So hopefully this video helped you get a better understanding of how to calculate the hard to borrow rate. Now this, of course, is one day. So if I was to short Bed Bath & Beyond today, great. It's gonna cost me that much. If I held it for two days, three days, four days, five days, Again, stack this number up, multiply this by the number of days that you're holding it, and that's roughly what it's going to cost you. So let's just say I'm looking at Bed Bath & Beyond. I look at this chart. I think that it's going to eventually fall back off down to like $5 a share again. Let's just say I think that, and I'm estimating it might take, you know, two to three months to do so. So I'm going to take this, you know, one point or this 0.175 number. I'm going to multiply that by, let's say, 60 days to give me roughly what it's going to cost me for a two-month hold on this stock. So let's just say I go 0.175 times that 60-day threshold or number that I'm just kind of speculating as a possibility. That's only going to cost me about $10.50 overall to hold this stock short for about two months. Now, why is that important? Well, it's going to be really important because I need to make sure I factor this in to my risk reward calculations when building out my trading plan. This isn't too, too bad. Like I said, under like 50%, 
is probably pretty doable for a couple day hold as long as your targets the downside are pretty decent in terms of, you know, I'm not going to look to target, you know, a quarter percent and risk, you know, 2% upside plus have to also worry about my risk being that hard to borrow rate. So if your risk reward ratios are in line and you're obviously risking much less than your reward on the trade, then it's not going to be too much of a big deal until that number really gets going over 50 plus percent. That's when it can start to hurt. So make sure you leave any questions and comments down below in the comment section. Like always, we'll leave a bunch of links and resources down below as well. There'll be a webinar covering three trading signals to add to your arsenal. If you want to check it out for free, link down below in the pinned comment and description box. Make sure you check those things out. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If it helped you out, share it with a friend. Consider saving this video so you can come back to it and refer to it or jot these notes down. Take some screenshots so you have this for the future. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.